Last week, one of my students asked me what the most important skill was to becoming an advanced player. The answer was obvious. In fact, if you don't develop this skill, you may become permanently trapped in 3.0 to 4.0 prison. So if you're someone that's looking to improve, you need to make sure you know all the information that we're about to go through. Most rec players don't have this skill, so if you can figure it out, you'll literally dominate open play. The skill that I'm referring to is the ability to hit the ball in the kitchen from wherever you are on the court. The main shot that we need this on is the drop, but there are plenty of other instances that we need this too, like on our resets and our dinks. I will say that the farther we are away from the net, the more difficult this skill becomes. So these tips are all especially important as we back away from the kitchen and we're hitting the ball from around here. So the first thing I wanna go over is the trajectory of the ball. This is definitely the main place that I see players getting their drops wrong. If you're the type of player that can already make in most of your drops, then this could be your biggest area for improvement. Think about it this way. If I'm shooting a basketball, my shot needs to have a good amount of arc on it for it to pass clean through the hoop without hitting the rim. You get the point. The same concept applies to any pickleball shot that you're trying to make land in the kitchen. You need the right amount of arc. The question is though, how high should you hit the ball? Now that depends on where you're hitting the shot from. As a rule of thumb, the further back you're hitting your drop from, the higher you'll need to hit the ball. This makes it easier to get the ball into the kitchen and it increases your margin for error. If you're really far back on a drop, you might not be able to go straight to the kitchen, but if you hit it good enough, you'll be able to take the next shot into the kitchen and move in off of that. If you're closer than that, you don't need to hit the ball quite as high, but you always need to make sure you're getting a good amount of arc. See how my ball is arcing over the net, landing in the kitchen? If you go for too much of a line drive, you'll either miss it in the net, or you set up your opponent with an easy shot. And whenever you're trying to hit the ball in the kitchen, you wanna make sure that you're aiming for the back part erring on the end of hitting it too far. If you're erring on the end of hitting your ball is too short, then you're gonna miss a ton of shots in the net. It's totally fine if your opponents are able to take the ball out of the air, as long as they're having to hit the ball up. So as you can see here, I'm hitting my drops as too much of the line drive, and because of that, I'm missing some of them in the net, and I'm hitting some of them too far. Do not do this. Here, I'm gonna be giving my ball a little bit more arc, which gives me the ability to get the ball to land in the kitchen every single time. And when I get backed up, I go a little bit higher. And when I move forward, I go a little lower. When I'm dinking, I don't need to go that higher than that at all. You always need that arc though. All things set aside, you won't be able to get the right trajectory if you're not using the proper footwork and you don't have the right technique. So let's get into that. So good footwork's definitely the most overlooked part of hitting effective drops. I think some players are so worried about how to hit the ball that they forget that they actually have to get there first. Think, it's significantly harder to be accurate the more off balance we are when we're hitting the ball. So on these trickier shots, you wanna to try to get in the most perfect position that you possibly can. You don't wanna to be too close to the ball or reaching when you make contact. Ideally, you're somewhere right around here, out in front and to the side of your body. To make this happen though, we need to focus on being lively with our feet and using the proper footwork depending on where we are on the court. From the back, that means we'll take a bunch of adjustment steps so that we get in the perfect position for the ball, like this. So watch my feet, whenever I see the ball, I immediately move to right to where I need to go. Adjustment steps, get the perfect position. You do not wanna be lazy and flat-footed like this. If you're playing like this, the second that you get a difficult shot, you're gonna be completely out of position. At the kitchen, you wanna stay low and on balance without taking too many steps. If I need to move to the sides, I'll just take one big lunge in either direction. You do not wanna take a ton of steps and get off balance like this. This is a big no-no. Like I said, proper footwork is probably the most overlooked part of hitting effective drops, so you always wanna make sure that you're directing your focus here. Technique, on the other hand, is something that you wanna lock in early in your career so that you can become automatic with the proper form. If you start off with bad form, could be developing bad habits that set your game back years. So make sure you're doing everything that we're about to go through. The first and most important part of our technique is our grip. You wanna make sure that you're using the continental grip when you hit a drop or any time that you're trying to hit the ball slow in pickleball. To use this grip, your index knuckle, so this knuckle right here, should be on this notch of the paddle. So not the big notch up here or the one on the side, but the angled one. So this knuckle on this notch. On top of this, you wanna use a compact motion out too much wrist. Do not give me the floppy fish. Everything in your swing should stay on the same side of your body that you start on. You don't wanna be swinging across like this like you do on a drive. A cool way to think about this is that we're drawing a line with our paddle towards our target. You don't wanna break that line. So when you're hitting the shot, 
all of the power should be coming from your shoulder. If you're the type of player that's super erratic on the drop, you really want to try to minimize the length of your swing and minimize the amount of wrist that you're using. Going back to footwork, I want to do whatever I can to get in the perfect position to hit the ball so that I'm hitting it out in front to the side of my body and I can rock forward through it like this. So we'll see how that looks. Right when I see where the ball is going, I adjust my feet so that I can rock forward through the ball. If I need to back up for the ball, I'm gonna back up early so that I can move forward. I get there quickly with my feet set. The odds that you're gonna hit a good shot go way down if you're leaning or out of position. So you wanna do whatever you can to get there as quickly as possible. So the last technical thing that I wanna go over on this shot is spin. Just know that there's two main types of spin that you use on a shot that you're hitting into the kitchen. Top spin and slice. If you're just starting out, I'd focus more on slice drops because they're generally a little bit easier to get the hang of. To make this happen, lead with the bottom edge of the paddle and the ball will spin back towards you, like this. To do a top spin drop, you just need to make sure that your paddle's going up as it goes forward, like this. These can make your dinks and drops a little trickier, but there's definitely a learning curve if you aren't familiar with using top spin. The slice drop though is totally sufficient to start with, so I wouldn't be too worried about spin if you're still figuring out how to hit the drop. Like I always say though, no matter how well you understand the technique and strategy of a shot, it'll be very hard to develop a new skill if you're not practicing with intention. So now I wanna show you the top few drills that you can do for this shot with two players. So in this drill, one player is gonna be up, one player is gonna be back. The player that's back is working on a drop, and the player that's up is hitting everything deep so that I can work on this shot. I'm trying to get everything to land right at the back portion of the kitchen, like I said moving my feet to get right behind the ball so that I can rock forward through it. If Drew gives me a shorter ball, I'm going to move forward and I'll go a little bit lower over the net. And if he gives me a deeper ball, I'll back up, go a little higher. Okay, I've been playing pickleball for a long time, so it's totally fine if you don't look like I do, how I do right now. But it's just important that you're trying your best and every time that you miss a drop, you try to correct that mistake and do a better job on the next one. So in this drill, I'm starting up, and I'm trying to hit every ball in the kitchen. The catch is though, as the rally progresses, I'm gonna slowly start to back up. If you're someone that has a harder time with the drop, this is a great way to progress from easy to hard. See how though when I'm backing up, I'm still setting my feet and rocking forward through the ball. You never wanna be on your back foot when you're hitting a drop. It's a shot that requires so much accuracy that you wanna to try to make it the same as you can every single time. So you shouldn't be looking different every single time that you hit a drop. Once you get to the back, you can slowly start to progress forward. And once you get back to the kitchen, you can give your partner a turn going back and you can work on hitting the ball to them. And if you're the type of player that's looking to take your game to the next level, make sure to subscribe. We make an awesome video just like this every single week. And if you wanna learn about third shot strategy, which goes hand in hand with what we just went over, watch this.